a redo on this. But I'm going to skip straight to it. With Love from Virginia writing circles. So the structure of the channel has changed. The gristle has evolved into With Love from Virginia. And the focus is the gristle was supposed to be yada, yada, yada. The coffee drink or beverage is made from bone. So that, you know, yeah, we're, we're getting down to the bone of things. With Love from Virginia, I'm switching to just talking about and just making clear. Um, just talking about and just making clear that why black men in America has lost and why I realized they're trying to now program, put the same programming on that they've utilized on the black women in America into women in other countries. Now, I realize it's already started and I don't know how far along it is. But I do think men in Africa should, we should have this talk, this understanding, because they've essentially, they've won. In America, black women do not love black men. They love their power over black men. And at first it seems, uh, what's the word? Through a form of convergent theory, it looks like love and it looks like a form of hard love where, uh, or, or uh, to some of the nerds, it looks like uh, a Tussandere relationship. Where a girl, she belittles you and beats you down, but she does it because of affection. That's how fucked up we are over here in America. Where a black woman, we're convinced as black men that a black woman beating us down is love. When in reality, it's just disdain. disdain. Uh, Tussandere's cannot exist in certain communities and this is one of those communities where they don't exist being down a black man does not mean that you love him but that's what they've been trying to convince the black men that is not true in the slightest in reality the black women are insecure because even though they're the freest that and have more power than a lot of black women across the world they've realized they pale in comparison to who they really want to be and that's the white woman they keep being made the white man's mistress and the white man loves this because if the black woman and you can we can look at a few relationships if the black if the black woman gets up to the level in a lot of cases of the and and i mean a lot of cases of the white woman she does what she was programmed to do and destroy the man who's equal to her now a lot of these white men do see that these black women do break down uh black men and in relation you know you know they kind of realize like if she ever thinks she's equal to me she will destroy me and yeah women are only either again they either and i think it's because they have kids they either see you as the man they want to fuck or as a child or something and something weaker than them now normally from what I've seen, a lot of these women, when they compare you to something as a child, they kind of destroy you. They kind of try to destroy you, at least here in America. I can't speak on in reality and how things work outside of America, but here in America, if, if a black woman deems you weak, she thinks she has authority to break and destroy you, to abuse you, to hurt you. And the only time this is not the case is when you are hard to control. Or you're of another color or race. That's it. <laughs> that, that's it. That's There's no meeting in the middle, trying to be in relations, trying to learn, trying to figure out. It's none of that. Because to black women, black men are their property. Understand again, there's a huge di difference between the feminism. And this is why there's a huge difference between the red pills. In white feminism... White women want to be equal to rich and powerful white men. Where in black women feminism, black women want to be equal to white women. They want to be the wife, the mistress, all of that. And part of it is televised to them. The girls who grew up with Moesha's version of... Hold on, let me pull it up. The people who grew up with this version of Cinderella, you know, a lot of them have turned around... And they date out. And a lot of them have, you know, they talk shit. And one of the reasons why she's oftentimes utilized is because uh, people think that she had a relation with, she might have, a relation with uh, the guy who she did the movie with the bodyguard with. They don't exactly sanction her off because uh, uh, they believe she's innocent. Now, there's a talk that she actually was killed off because she was trying to get rights to her song, something like that. 
But, you know, that's not the way the community kind of views uh, her. And it's not the way the white community, they view her as like, oh, she could have possibly divested and she would have saved her life. And, you know, if, if you know, all you got to do is throw some of these women a sob story from this time and they were deemed innocent. Just like Ike Turner and, and, and his wife. Like, he was abusive, but then later on we find out that not only was she not that innocent, there were some crimes she was actually committing. But, you know, because she was under uh, Ike Turner, they could blame Ike Turner. And, you know, this was the, them blaming the men and never holding the women accountable. And this is one of the reasons why the women realized, yeah, we have all this power. But we don't get as much power as a, you know, they only have power when it's time to leverage against black men systematically. That's the only time white society, any of that gives them any power. Now, it's not just her. Um, we have Holly Berry, who she dated a few. But, you know, she's mostly known in movies. If you look at her movies, she's mostly known for, and, and, and this is weird. You knew he was going to say the N word. You, you knew. You knew. I'm sorry. I don't believe she didn't know. I think she just believed that uh, she could leverage when it came to child support. Because, look, it's really about, oh, I, I don't want to pay child support to this guy. When he was saying N-word to her, she didn't care. <laughs> she didn't. Because a lot of them don't care. I've seen in real time. Uh, there are some. Really? Right now? And understand, I'm not talking about her relationship to celebrate the death of her relationship or anything like that. I don't go out and I don't try to find interracial relationships and make fun of them and talk bad when they don't work out. Because it's honestly a lot more trouble than people give it uh, are honest about. I've met men who are in the military who have had mixed daughters and they let me know even with military and what have happened, like, it's, it's difficult. And I mean black men who have had and they decided to step up and be fathers. And they've talked about how actually difficult it is, in some cases, to have a family. Because, you know, when you go and you serve, it shouldn't be a question about your loyalty, what type of black man you are, this, that, and the other. But it, it was. It was challenged, even as veterans. And that doesn't automatically make you a good or nice person. It doesn't make you a, uh, more or less of a deadbeat dad. But at the same time, some of the ridicule stuff they still got was interesting. But, of course, the only reason why we're hearing about this from Hailey Berry is mainly because she's paying child support. Now, do I believe that she's lying about her saying the N-word? No. Like I said, in real time, I've seen it. There are some black women that when their white boyfriends were racist to them, and men of other races, they thought it was cute. And we have Slash's mom. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind... This is very, very important. Would black women let it fly if a man decided to denounce his child? This is what I mean by black women do not... Res Please understand. I don't mean this in the slightest bit of anything. But I mean, I can literally, like Captain America, I can do this all day to prove that they do not like being black. And the insecurity that they have... They try to put into, raise into the black men. They say that all this black loyalty and this, that. What they mean is to the black matriarchy here in America. That's what they really mean. They mean worshiping the women, which inadvertently means worshiping white men. Because when white men do them dirty, when white men have babies, when, when white men pull a carbon copy, when, when white men do all this other stuff, none of it. You will get none of black women being loud about it. And I've actually seen it because there have been a few times when I've seen these relationships play out. And then again, I don't watch for them to fail. But I've watched it how the same black woman who's loud and, and, and tells everyone what's going on in her house and her relations and this side and the other will be quiet about stuff like this. Look at how quiet this is. This is a form of worship. I really need you to understand this isn't self-love. This is worship. I really want you to understand that this is worship. And I, past a certain point, honestly don't care. But I do have a problem with them lying about worshiping these men and then making us accountable. If you want to worship white men, fine. But why lie about it? Now, they lie about it, main reason, because that's one of the only reasons why they get money and support. You see, the only reason why 
they're put in a position that they are, it's because they're the only ones who can hurt black men like this. And black women know it. They know that they're the only ones who are in a position to actually hurt black men. But black women don't want to do that past a certain point. They just want to be the same as white women and not be a mistress. They want to be respected and loved by the white men. They want all this other stuff. And that's where some of the pain comes from. That's where the, the, this underdog desire that some of the black women have. Because here's the thing. They are not challenged for dating white men. In a community, in fact, where, where is it? We don't have any power to. They are challenged because the white man won't allow them to do that because the white man's not stupid. Once black women see themselves as equal to white men, a lot of them will disrespect them much more often. There are some black women who do disrespect white men, but they don't do it as much because black women care about what they look like. They care about their market value. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, they'll try to put certain things on black men is because they want to make it seem like, well, oh, we're black women and we make kings. No, the fuck they don't make kings. Look, I'm going I'm to be, be real with you. A tall nigga nuts in a woman, in a short black woman, and maybe sometimes you get a ball player. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. My tall dad nutted in my short mom. I came up a few inches taller than my mom. I get shit from the community. The plan was because literally the same church they got married in, one of the guys, and I'm not joking about this, one of the guys is playing football, what is it, for the, not for the Redskins, but for the team they are now. And it's actually pretty interesting. But that was the hope. You know, you have this, you have a bunch of boys, they go out to play ball, they make you money. It was never about building a community. And it shows because the black women always think that they know more. They don't want leadership from the black men and things like that. And that'll take you from white men. They'll take you from men of other communities. This is provable. Again, like Captain America, I can do this all day. I can prove over and over again. Monster Cardo. Monster Cardo. Monster Cardo. That they don't have the capacity nor do they care to respect black men or our leadership. Because in our eyes, well, in their eyes, we've already lost. Their eyes are not on God. Their master is here on earth, and their master is the white man. And again, this is something I can prove all day, all time, over and over again. They only want to deal with black men if they can control them, or they only want to deal with them to a certain degree. Why would they indulge in feminism if they know our community cannot afford feminism? What did black men do to where black women think that they can utilize feminism and hurt black men? Logically, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense on one area, and it's that black women just want to beat down on black men. Well, where does it come from? It comes from the fact that black women are insecure about not being white women. This is what I mean. When you really look at that and you really keep getting that vibe and you keep in it and feeling it, you keep seeing it. When I started, when I kept looking at these pieces and I put it together and I realized that it comes from black women being insecure about not being white and, and, and being insecure about having to always be the mistress. Because they're not just white men's mistress. Please understand, they're America's mistress. You see, in order for America to seem like the land of indulgence, they had to, and I mean they had to, utilize some form of woman. Now, they did not want to use their own woman. This is very important. They did not want to utilize white women because then that would seem like they're inviting other races of people to fuck white women they're women but what they realized was that okay america once was represented by black women on on a lot of things let's give it back to them let's say this and what ends up happening is america is viewed to a degree where black women are the mistress they're and you know they want to seem desirable and they're desirable but they're desirable like something you would see on a poster as a consumable item for sex, not for something long-term. Now, sometimes they do have long-term relationships. But in a lot of cases, that's only because they're sustaining it mainly because they, they want it to work. And that's what I'm saying. A lot of these relationships that they have, a lot of these black women don't want it to work. But they want black men to think in their head and blame themselves for the relationship and the community and the way it is. And it doesn't work. Because anytime we pay attention to what they do whenever they leave outside of the community, it proves that they're the ones actually destroying the community, not the men. 
in what position, me a regular, regular, average black man right now, in what position am I to hurt black women? Rhetoric-wise rhetoric or anything, I'm not. And that's also one of the reasons why I enjoy this channel not being as famous as it is. But being in that, I wanted to explain why I've changed over to With Love from Virginia. Now, it's more represented, <laughs> I'm still going with the restaurante theme, but it's represented more like as a smoke. I'm, sh I'm a black indigenous dude handing a smoke over to an African guy, and it's like With Love from Virginia. It's all rolled up, all nice and stuff like that. But I kind of go, all right, I'm going to go into a few of the episodes and a few of the writings. I'm going to try to structure it better. But episode one, the culture of the community, it's the first episode slash article. I'm going to do writings and I'm going to try to get it translated into other African languages and things of that nature. I address how there's a huge misconception between, there's a huge misconception between race and color. Yes, there is. One of the reasons why some people deny being black is because they think black is exactly equal to African or exactly equal to a specific type of African when it is not. Race is not equal to that. I talk about how color is more like the pushback. I talk about how color is more about the pushback of the law. Sorry, I know I wrote this, but yeah. And, and that's true. When it comes to black and when it comes to being a minority, it's more about how the law will treat you different based off of your color. And that happens. If you And it's interesting because, again, like even when people try to get political about it, in some cases, even with the Repub side, you can't then try to say that you're being treated a certain way by either side by being black then. But neither side, you see, one, you, you got to pick a struggle. And if you're like, well, I've decided to be with this side or that side, you can't then try to say, well, they're doing this, that because I'm black. No, they should have you covered over there, especially in the red side. But they a lot of times they don't. Again, uh, in North Carolina, when that racist sheriff got caught being racist, a lot of his black fellow officers were actually surprised and they were scared not really scared but they were just like talking about how surprised they were it is used in levied and levied sorry i did talk to text so it's a lot of notes are messed up against people who are shade of color and not a race which is true if someone is a specific race but uh they're a certain color they're going to be treated different and this happens a lot in the law Mexican, Hispanic, Puerto Ricans are a huge example of this. Whereas we can identify the roots of them being dark skin, yeah, along with artifacts ranging from South America to North America, including temples, they are treated different based on whether they accepted being conquered and how America views them and, and how America views MS-13 versus black gangs, which, which is a huge example. Uh, black people do not take MS-13 and try to utilize it to try to say Mexicans and certain people are violent. Even and I know MS13 may not be Mexicans. It may not just be them. But we don't utilize that. I don't try to say like people who are Hispanic, Latino, Mexican are in gangs in this, that, and the other. Now, in a certain part of the city, there are a number of them who can't drive. And, you know, I've almost lost my life twice and they did take out my fam one of my family members who has passed. I don't try to utilize things like that. I don't try to leverage things like that. But in some cases, some of them are convinced to do that. And I think that's honestly sad. But the main thing I wanted to cover is how race and color are very different and how color is utilized and how in the inverse, there are some people who are afraid of the label black. I mean, like if you're afraid of it because of religious reasons, yeah, I get that. But when I'm talking about like where some people are like, uh, we're not black because X, Y, and Z. And by the definition, you are black, but it's like you don't want to be associated with what they associate black with. That's really a mental trigger. That's them trying to convince you that because you're labeled as something, that they can slap on other things with it. For example, if you're identified as a man, you're not going to run away from being ident identified as a man because of all the negative stuff that comes with it. You shouldn't. The mistress misses her master. I think I talked about this. I'm going to just cover the first three episodes. The mistress misses her master. Another title pending. Yeah. The purpose of this is to tie the first listed episode slash article with how black women actually do not want to 
do not want the black men within the community to thrive, which is true. Make it very clear that the women, as well as the negative rhetoric about black men, go hand in hand. Yeah. Black women have actually been caught on TV using negative rhetoric and rhetoric that's not even true on black men to leverage certain things. Even when it comes to dating out, which is, again, interesting. Again, I don't want to attack them dating out. But I can, one of the strongest points of me proving that black women are unhappy about being black and not about black men in the community is hinged off of, unfortunately, how they act when they date outside and how they treat those races different. And it's, uh, I'll be honest, if we're playing, uh, if we're playing uh, Magic the Gathering, th this is my, them dating out gives me infinite tokens, gives me infinite uh, summons, give me infinite, it, it, it's, it makes the game broken. Because they try to say, well, how can you prove this? Well, I found a black man who, 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 who agrees with us, so we shouldn't, oh no, let's go by the number of this, that, and, and then they try to act like, well, that doesn't exist. Because here's the thing, even the men who agree with them can say nothing to the numbers, can say nothing to the statistics, can say nothing to the charts. They can say nothing to that. And this is why despite what the women do and how they move, we should not get with them. Because realize, I, I see a lot of short men, because I'm short. I see a lot of short men trying to go out and date, and I feel sorry for them because what they don't realize is that a lot of these women did not apologize for disrespecting them. And they're dating them, but they're not taking them seriously. So I'm going to see a lot of these short black men, they're going to go out, they're going to date, they're going to support these women. And all these women have done this, they've learned to lie better. They're still doing the same stuff. They're just being quiet and clever. The last generation of black women were loud. This generation, the newer one from what I'm seeing, they're quiet, but they're still doing the same stuff. Some of the same young men are still complaining about how the women are moving. And I'm surprised because I'm like, wait, but they're quiet. And then I realized, yeah. But they're willing to utilize uh, negative rhetoric and not course correct themselves. And correct the course that they're traveling down when it comes to the logic. But, you know, they don't have to. No other race really holds them accountable for doing that. They try to say it's a man's job, but then they make sure that the men can't correct the community either. It's not just the black women. Please understand. Because one minute they try to hold men like me accountable, but then they try to take the leadership ability away from men like me. So... How does that make sense? And it's not just a black woman. I'm saying people outside the community. Now, I'm okay with it because, again, I read the Bible and I understand prophecy. For me, that's my answer. I've come to the point of realizing that through prophecy, these men who want to be God are God's contenders. A lot of people who are pro-oppression are actually literally trying to be God's contenders and literally trying to square up with God. And how they shape things and how they manipulate things and how they get black women to beat down on us. And sometimes they do it. They get other races of people so that they can take a smoke. They can take a smoke break while they got oriental people beating us down. Mexican, other races of people beating us down when, when they feel like it. But the messed up thing, but the beautiful thing is it lines up with scripture and things that have already been prophesied. So seeing some of these prophecies play out and how close they are to correct. I all of a sudden don't feel so bad. I really don't. Because I'm like, yo, these prophecies are real. The harder they try to oppress us, the more obvious it becomes. And even about the women, there are scriptures that go into that. And I'm going to go into that later. But they don't course correct themselves. But going from here. Talk about how the government pretty much pays black women to keep the community dysfunctional. True. But first of all, make it very, very clear that the black women who are aware that they are doing this. A lot of them are aware. A lot of black women know that they are making men unfit to lead. And the point of them doing that is so that they can do whatever they want. They are purposely producing broken black men, traumatizing and breaking black men. Because here's the thing, to understand girl math, you, in some cases, you have to question your mom. You have to question certain things around you. Black men are not built and designed to question the women around them in a lot of cases. They're nurtured and designed to only question men. 
and only question why did my dad do this, that, and the other. Revenge, your mother's revenge, because the the man that she wanted to fuck, and she managed to get some of the sperm off of him, and he didn't do this, that, and the other. Went in a world where no one owes anyone anything. Go out there and date, and you find out that these women know that the, you know, the you the world owes you nothing, because they they don't feel any obligation to treat you right. And unfortunately, that's when a lot of these men find out the truth. They go out and date, and they realize, oh. The obligations that were put on me through trauma, these black women don't care about, of course. Yeah. But they are aware of it. A lot of them are aware of it. They are aware of this. Our doing is simply because they are mad. And are doing it. Again, I did talk to Tex. They're simply doing this because they're mad. They are not equivalent to a white woman. I did say that. In the eyes of black men... But in the eyes of white men, as well as white America, which is true. This is about how white America sees them. A lot of their anguish, pain, and them being upset is because they're already looking outside the community. Understand, emotionally, they're not reacting like women trying to build up their black community. They're reacting like scorned black women who are scorned because they're not seen the same as white women. Now, why some black women don't be honest and they don't just say it is because then... It kind of looks bad on them. They're trying to avoid looking bad, but, you know, they can beat up and mess up black men as much as they want to. So, you know, it's a plus for them. Black women are tired of being a secret mistress. Yes, they are. But they are secret because they are the white man's greatest weapon to keeping the black community dysfunction, uh, dysfunctional. That's what I meant to put. Men with, the issues are easily point men with issues are easily pointed out and corrected, not women. That is absolutely correct in the black community. Yes, it is. And again, that's because the black women are not building a black community. Point out in great, in great discretion that even black women do not submit to white men. They still follow the path laid out before them by white men. Still make black men lesser. I don't know what I really meant by that. Um. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember. Black women who technically do follow this path, because I understand the main shot in some cases is not for them to recognize white men's greatness. It's for the black women to look at black men as lesser. And the black women do that. They do. Again, like Captain America, I can do this all day. Unfortunately, on some Steve Rogers, and not Sam Walton, I don't know what he says. Maybe he says I can do it all day. But on some Steve Rogers, I can do it all day. Lastly, point out the feminist movement differs in color mainly because of white feminism to white women. Make, yeah, I said that. It's really made to make black women equal to white women. It's invasive to the community. Yeah. But in reality, it is proof that black women love white men and white, yeah, white men only. I want... Really? That wasn't me. It, it's because of the talk to text. They want their approval more, and they do not care for the respect of black men, and always sees them as a means to an end. They ensure that we cannot build for ourselves... They, they ensure we cannot build ourselves up correctly from the womb to death. This is also correct. And they are insensitive to our deaths. They are. Which is why it's weird that black women try to then turn around and talk about my son got shot this time. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. Let me be honest. I didn't do hood nigger shit when I was in Southside and when I was in the ghetto. And that's the main reason why I don't get bitches now. I didn't do hood nigger. Now I carried a gun. I've done concealed carry. I've done a few things. But because I did on low and I didn't. I wasn't this loud ghetto. Gang bang. Do, 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 do. I didn't do none of that dumb shit. You don't get bitches. You don't get women. Unless you do the hood nigger shit. That's why I know they don't care about our lives for real. That is really so that some of these moms can then collect back on the men that they damaged. Like, oh, oh, oh he was going to be something in the community. Now, I didn't do hood shit. And that cost me having kids in the community. Because I didn't want to be dumb. I didn't want to be stupid. I didn't want to break down certain things. Now, the kids are not a reward because in a lot of cases, the kids are not by the men. You see, if you're really the men that they want to have kids with, guess what? They'll quietly give it to you. 
They won't make a fuss. They'll give you sex. They'll give you certain things. If you have to make a noise, if you have to ask for something, you're not the alpha for real, for real. Being loud and defending women is only something they respect as a way to hurt other men. It's the hope of them utilizing numbers to break you mentally. It's some of the stuff you see on social media when you go in and a bunch of people try to agree to try to break your spirit. That's why. It's not even about love or respect. It's about power and, and doing that. It is important because they are running out of time and they can no longer lie, which is true. The results are in and Kevin Samuel's existence had to make them push their agenda forward for the plan that was black men to function like a matriarchy. Something that no community is functioning healthy as right now. True. A lot of matriarchies do not function well. Uh, and they do not build up to cities. They do not build well. And that's why they keep trying to make uh, matriarchies uh, infect or affect a lot of these. Because uh, because in reality, yeah, it has affected a lot of white places, but not a lot, a lot of them. You still have a lot more conservative white places. But anytime they affect the black places, they do, they normally don't do too well. And then they need the government assistance, which is what they want. You see, the American government wants to break some of the other black countries by using feminism like they broke the black community here in America. Because I can assure you, all my literal life, that black women do not care about my life. I am in this, I'm, I'm disposable. As a black man, I'm disposable to the black woman. The hardest thing I can do is die. That's the coolest thing I can do. That's the best thing I can do to, to for a black woman. They don't care about my life. That Black Lives Matter, it was shit so that they can recoup money. It's them trying to make money off of us. That's it. They don't care about black lives. Now, do the men care about black lives? Yeah. That woman who was shot by the officer, I thought that was sad and a tragedy. I really did. I thought it was sad that that happened. But I also understand that if her husband took the bullet, that chick might have moved on that weekend. It, it would have been nothing. Our deaths just don't mean anything to black women. They just say that it does to make themselves look good, market value-wise. But they don't care about our lives because literally, me not gangbanging, me not doing hood stuff, me deciding to live a healthy life and just try to sustain and stay afloat does not attract black women. It doesn't, it, none of them find it attractive. All right next is, which black woman is the real black woman? For the art for this article, we have Tia and Tamara, we have Sister Sister, along with their respective husbands in the background. The reason why this is important is because there's argument, there's argument being made that if your parent does not, that your parent does not determine how loyal and respectful you are to the black community, when T and Tamara just proved that incorrect. One of them is married to a black man who she divorced, and one of them is married to a white man who she's working with, married, having another baby, sitting in the background, but, you know, they try to convince us because, you know, we're supposed to be stupid. We're really supposed to be stupid as black men. And they try to raise us to be stupid for that reason. But no, they see it as tricky. Bruno Mars, by example, is white. Now, is he black to a point that he could be discriminated against? Yes. Bruno Mars could be discriminated against, but by biblical standards, by old world standards, by technicalities, he is white. This is why in the Bible and certain things, people refer to their fathers or certain people because that's in it. Yeah, one sister respects her white husband because he's white. Yeah, and another just respects her husband because he's black. I'm sorry, these notes are messed up, but I realized I still had to do this today. This is a perfect example. Yeah, it is. It is a perfect example. That's why I was going to use T and Tamara for this. It's a also a perfect example that attraction, ma that attraction, it matters nothing in the face of control. Black women want to be in control of black men because they do not respect them. True. Again, I can prove that all day. Also, they only respect black men that they have power over. They do not like or res that they do not like or respect. A black man who has a backbone trying and what? 
the idea was to alter the nature of black yeah the idea was to alter the, the nature of black men using trauma to make the black men agree with a matriarchy that ultimately destroys them and we see that playing out now using the secrets of trauma black women were aware of this yeah they traumatized black men on purpose you see a lot of black women are angry because they're not white women but they're angry that when they produce the results that should be getting them tall, just tall black athletic men that they want to fuck when they want to some of these black men are like, you know, them white girls ain't really too bad. And they're like, damn it. Damn it. Didn't we break them? Didn't we hurt them? Because in reality, it should produce that. They should be able to get tall, athletic, big dick black men when they feel like it. That's the way they set up the community. This is why, again, there's a lot of weird pain that the black men don't understand that the women go through. And then they lash out. And we'd be wondering where it comes from. Number one. Black women understand that they're not white women and it hurts them. Number two, black women understand that they've manipulated the community to produce certain results. And when they do not get certain results, they believe they have authority to punish and kill us. They do. This is why divestors function differently. Yeah, yeah, a lot of black women, again, who date out do function differently. They don't try to bring those destructive ways. And in fact, in a lot of their books that has been pointed out. Now, it's not bar for bar true, understand. They want to be comfortable enough to where they can be like white women. But in some cases, then the feminism triggers and they treat that white man just like they would treat a black man or they treat that white man just like a white woman would treat that white man. I mean, it depends on, but one of the ways they get them is like the families will, the white family will ensure that the black woman doesn't have an easy time marrying, making sure she has to prove herself constantly over and over again through a sequence. And what it does is through suggestive, I'm not going to say hypnotism, but just through suggestive actions, eventually she realizes I have to respect this man. And she don't bring the same disrespect. This is why when you marry, a family has power. This is also why black women like breaking down <laughs> the community. Because then they don't have to... They, how many times do black women cheat and then they try to make it seem like it was on a guy for the reason they cheated? And I don't why it's up to that. I just stay away. Again, it's not about... Um, it's not about bashing. I don't want there to be consequences for black women. I want, it, I just want it to stop. I just want it to stop. I want the manipulation to stop. Because I get it. You're hurting. But hurt alone over there. Hurt where you can't affect someone else. Because I was about to walk away from this fully until I realized they can hurt the next generation. I went out to a Comic-Con con. <laughs> Comic-Con con. I went out to a comic con and I realized they were doing it to the next generation. I, I met some young geeks and nerds and I thought they were safe. I thought it was just the Me Too movement that happened just to my generation. And I was surprised to find out that a lot of these women are continuing the same practices. Now, normally as a man, some men just go their own way and they're like, these other guys will figure it out. No. They won't figure it out. This has been done carefully and planned. Including the movie Carbon Copy. Now, Carbon Copy, I'm a. This movie, Carbon Copy, was by Nozell. It got bad reviews, really, because uh, n no real reason. Basically, white man, black son. Even a uh, family guy made fun of this, my black son. Now. This movie also got bad reviews because it led into some truths. Him having a black son and having to be responsible meant that he was going to have to deal with a lot of it. And it could be viewed as either way. It could be viewed as a warning sign, but it could be viewed as a way to build empathy for a white man with a black son. However, the biggest takeaway is that in the household, when she was raising this black man, did she report to the government that her husband was white? Or does the government record this household as a black household or a white household? They're recorded as a black household. This produced a black household, according to the government. 
Do you get it now? I did want to go and talk about a little bit on the porn and the BBC fear, which is actually bullshit. So let me be honest about this. I'm not trying to tell why people how to feel, but I've noticed that when it comes to number wise, their situation is not as bad. And a lot of times they're talking out of fear of being in a situation that they see the results that black men are in. If anything, this was just another social experiment to see how matriarchies play it out at the cost of the black community. Because women don't go backwards, these women are now forever affected by this matriarchal thing. But the difference is, is that, you see, when things don't work out as a, with white men, they can go to women of other races, not as bad, not as hard. The only thing is, like, maybe they might have trouble. Now, as a black man, mm -mm. the BBC fear, the thought that I, I, when, when a black man is near a woman of another race, they bring down their integrity, is something that they put out there. To affect it so that like men like me don't have other options. So you have this combination of black women making it easier and cheaper for them to date when they're dating out. Now sometimes they switch it up because they're like, well, we did enough destroying the black men. We should be able to cash in our tokens. Then when they can't, they're, they're confused. I mean, when you be confused, the, their main thing is destroying black men and making fun of black men and humiliating black men. Now, there have been videos recently where white women have come up and humiliated their white husbands and everyone came after them. That does not happen in the black community because even your mama kind of enjoys, <laughs> even even the, the black moms kind of enjoy black men get, being humiliated. They're not going to let that up. They couldn't control your father, so they might just break you. Or they couldn't get the man that they wanted. You see, it's because they believe they're owed that responsibility, that, not not the responsibility, that black women are, are owed that uh they're, they're owed that, that they react the way that they do. They truly believe that they are owed the best of the best simply because they're trying to, they're controlling the community from the background. And again, this coupled with their insecurity for not being white women and not being treated the same is why they react the way that they do and they punch down on black men. And I say punch down because they make the black men lesser so that they can punch down on. Uh, let me see. Birth. Born in a pit of... It did it again. So the title is supposed to be Born in a Pit of uh, Vipers. The truth about the poisonous matriarchy. And why they want to spread it to other black countries. Now this is the most important thing. With this one, voting detail with power and elect black women leaders. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the last ones were to kind of point out that in a lot of cases, black women cannot be leaders. And in the black community, the main reason why they blame black men is because they know that secretly they, the women are, are, the, are the reason why we're getting certain results. But the men aren't exactly uh, producing the results that the women want. So when things go wrong... They blame the black men, but when things go right, it's a strong black woman, strong black community. The black man couldn't stop the black woman from doing this to any other. The black man got in the way unless he was there to support her. That's the rhetoric. Which also allows for them, when it comes to affirmative action, and they win that lottery of affirmative action, to get underneath the desk and suck some white hog every now and then. See, everyone wins. But not the black man, but you know, that's the point. Again, these prophecies in the Bible are playing out. And I'm, I'm look, I'm fine with it, because the prophecies also point out that the women, that the black women who are the black women who are doing this, as well as the master that they're doing it to, are the people who are literally going to fight God. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay with it, because the identity of that person is being made clear by the black woman. I'm cool with it. But yeah, black women said black men are for failure. It's a trans, every trans relationship is transactional. They don't build uh, or think to build a strong black relationship with the thought that they're building a strong black relationship or trying to build a strong black community. It's with the thought of the end of serving the individual. So yeah, but they dial it back. They dial it back mainly because through longevity. The only thing that they will have to their name 
is building matriarchies all across the world. And this is this is what the black women want. You see, if passport bros win and black men stop dating them, they lose the one thing that the market gives them power over. Because everyone already fucks black women easy. Everyone. You see, that's the lie that they try to send it out. Like me as an average black dude, I don't get black women's attention, affection, none of that easy. And that's done with a point and a purpose. It's supposed to be hard for me to get a black woman's attention and affection so that they recoup, recoup some of the damage and stuff lost from making it easier for other races to fuck them. They are recouping some of that. But anyone can. Oriental guys can. Chinese. Anyone can. And that's one of the things that they try to hide. But it's, again, like Captain America, I can do this all day. I can prove it all day. You want me to prove it? I can do it. Let me have my little setup and I can do it all day. I can do it. Squirrel deck. <laughs> if you play Magic the Gathering, squirrels all day. Rats all day. Tokens all day. Infinite tokens. I can print it. I, I, I can make. I win. We ain't running no fair one. Like, I will hit it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Non-stop. And again, it's not meant to be violent. It's just to prove that there is an answer for this. Because the black women put their affection and their support on a scarcity. There are some black men that they do protect. And there are some black men that they do look out for. But it's not all black men. And what they do is they try to make men like me, who they actually honestly don't respect, chase after their effect, uh, uh, affection. Chase after their support. Like if they'll give it to me. When in reality, I'm supposed to be thinking, I'm not going to say I can build on my own, but I should be trying to build on my own or to get certain things and try to make myself self-sufficient first. But what they want me to do is come out the womb and chase down helping out a black woman just because. The same black woman who don't want me to be whole, who don't want me to be healed, who don't want me to have anything. Because then I, I affect their infinite money glitch. The black woman's infinite money glitch is that as a black man, being born a black man, you see the black women feel insecure about not being black women, but they want me to be insecure about being a black man and feeling guilty about being a black man. Oh, I feel terrible about being a black man. That's what they want me to feel. Oh, I've, uh, I don't compare to the white man. I don't give a fuck if I compare it to any man of any other. I don't give a flying fuck. I don't give a flying monkey fuck. I don't give a flying monkey fuck and ringling, barlings and baileys, whatever. I forgot. Wow, that used to be a thing. Ringling's, I can't say it. I saw it a few times. But I don't give a flying circus monkey fuck. I don't give a flying through hoops. The point is I don't give a fuck. I don't want to be another race of people. If they're treated different, and, they're, and the answer is they're treated different because they're white, guess what? Past a certain point, I'm not going to keep questioning it. Especially now that I got these biblical answers. I know what's up. This is their heaven. This is the white man's heaven. I, I get it. Fine. Cool. Now that I understand that, I'm not going to question anything. Because I, I know certain things now. But the black woman wanted me to feel that. They wanted me to feel bad about that. Because they felt bad about that. But what black women are starting to do is they're starting to quiet down. And not being as loud about it because they want to spread it. They want to make it seem like a good thing. And what's going on is when it comes to schooling, when some of these black women from other countries come over here, they're teaching them how to bring it back over there. And sometimes that comes with homosexuality. Sometimes that comes with uh, women thinking that uh, matriarchies actually help men, which they don't. They don't. None of these, none of this matriarchal stuff that black women ever adapted has ever helped out black men or ever helped out the community. It has only benefited people outside the community or only specifically black women and not the black children, but the men that black women want to fuck. Those are the only ones who benefit. And black women love this power because it almost makes them feel as important as a white woman. But they care about the it looking good because they, some of them understand, okay, fine, I, I can't be a mistress or, or I, I got to be a mistress. But 
I can at least look good and spread this. Because they are hurting for not being equivalent to white women. They really are. They really are. But this is also why the black women sit there at the table and make the decisions. You see, we keep talking about a table as black men. And what we're not paying attention to is, honestly, the table is not our table. You got to understand the reason why they say, they talk about they don't have to bring a table. is because black women sit at another person's table. They prepare food at another person's table. It's not the black man's table. And that's why this discussion goes back and forth. You see, when things start changing in the white world and in the white community, they don't. The white women don't play certain games. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. You have some loud feminists. You have some loud women. But notice how it, it changed in comparison to what happened in a black community. No, notice how they're not going as hard to try to destroy white men in a white community. Do, do, you, do you get it? Do you understand it for real? For real? Fourth of the black community. Point out how even though they teach black men that the ball player is the product, black women themselves do not respect the product. True. Black women do not respect the ball players they actually produce. They just like the power of producing them. And it goes back and it glorifies themselves. Uh, I was going to have a saying and it's going to be really cool. I'm going to bring it back later because probably no one's going to see this. But what I was going to say was that in comparison to the boys' uh, uh, little episode, because I, I didn't see all of the boys. I don't know everything about it, but I did see that one clip with the guy from Do the Right Thing. And I'm sorry I don't know his name. No disrespect to him. He's a phenomenal actor. But he makes it very, very clear that just like the ball player, Homelander is not the most important product. The most important product is the ability for women to constantly produce matriarchal households. That's what white men find valuable in them. Even though they don't want it, them making matriarchal households to destroy black men and the setup is very valuable to the white men. And white women uh, black women understand that this makes them look valuable. But even if the white man never acknowledges them, guess what? The way they have it set up, they can sit down, get big old dicks from tall old black men whenever they want to fuck whoever. No one can question them. They can do whatever they want with their money. That is a black woman's heaven. Why would they give that up? Now, I want to remind everyone, especially the black men, that we're technically still in captivity. And I don't mean that for that. What I mean is that technically... White people have a setup that no matter what, no matter what level in, you, you, uh, level you're at, they can remove you from the position. They can do certain things whatever they want. And again, I have a piece about that. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not trying to take charge of my life and do certain things. Don't get it twisted. God still expects me to take charge of my life and still try to do certain things. Because this is the trial period here on earth. You're supposed to still try to do the right thing. However, however... I still understand past a certain point that the women have given up on it. They don't care or believe in that. And they're just trying to break down as many men as possible because they technically have their heaven. They have, Black women have no, absolutely no reason to fight for black freedom or black rights because no matter what, even though some of them get killed off, they are always in a better position. They will never give up this little slice of heaven because they're not questioned for picking the wrong man. They're not questioned for making certain decisions. They can go and get fucked out and have a pushed out, pushed to the side, pushed up and down, sideways, pushed out, blown out pussy. That honestly, some of them actually fuck animals. I forgot. Hey, uh, black men, stop chasing after some of these black women who be fucking white men, stuff like that. Some of them fuck animals for white men's entertainment. Like, some of y'all are literally fucking behind animals. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, st stop stop doing that. Like, especially these women who be trying to make you compete for their pussy and stuff like that. Some of them have fucked animals. I found that out. I found that out. Uh, I didn't fuck her. But she let me, but there was a black woman who let me know that out in the county, there were some 
black women who are allowing themselves to be fucked by farm animals for white men's entertainment. That's why, why you get some of these black, these women who kind of act almost like Serena when it comes to their husbands. Like, um, I mean, to their husbands. And, and they'd be trying to be, white. when can I be white? Let me put on more white makeup. You know, like that. I'm not saying she did. I don't know what the fuck she did. Um, I don't even know who she is technically anymore. She got her little rewards, and now she's trying to be white. I don't. I don't know. You see, when Michael Jackson did it. You know, he tried to be an alien. So I thought it was part of that. I thought it was cool when Michael Jackson did it. I didn't think it was insecurity. I thought it was Michael Jackson. He was like, ah, I'm gonna do this magic trick because he was always a dancing magician. And he was like, I'm gonna do this magic trick. I'm a white man now. Oh, 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 oh. Now I'm like, oh shit. But yeah, they actually need the black man to fail. They need the average black man to fail in order for black women to constantly be able to access this. They are constantly competing with black men to ensure that the next generation is matriarchal and the black men fail on average. That way, the black men have to default to the black female matriarchy where do black women get government money, government assistance, support, supporting money from other men, supporting money sometimes from white men, and they're the only versions that get money. Now, as the media man pointed out, and a lot of people, they don't actually out-earn us. We just be out there spending less money. Now, if you got child support like that, you're going to work your ass hard, but you're not going to be able to show for it. And a lot of these black women didn't account for that when they were trying to sit up there and say they out earn black men. The problem with that is, is when they're showing all this expensive stuff they have, it actually means that they suck dick to get that. Like, that's my, that's my immediate connection. When I worked at Walmart for a few years, there were women showing up with expensive stuff. And I had to learn through the grapevine, and unfortunately, that a lot of them were getting that nice little stuff because of who they were fucking. Because we all were making, at the time, $12 an hour. I think they bumped it up. Is it still? I don't know what it is now. But was it 12 I don't remember towards the end. I just got my little check because I was paying things off, paying off a car, uh, paying off a school because I got sick. Um... Uh, but yeah, but they need us to fail. That's the other side of this. And what they're going to teach some of these women is how to destroy you in a lot of these other black countries and things like that. And I need y'all to really understand that because that is love. That is charity of me trying to make sure you other black men understand this. That is the ultimate form according to my religious standpoint of love and charity because Black women can say whatever the fuck they want to. Results matter. And how do I know that? When a black woman looks at me, she doesn't give a fuck who I am. She just cares about fucking results. My name could be... If I'm over if I'm over six foot, have this and the other six pack apps. And if I'm hung, she's going to be down there sucking me before she even knows what language I even speak. She's going to be down there sucking, trying to figure out certain things. Trying to figure out how to guilt me into getting shit. They don't care who I am. They just see the black skin and they try the conditioning. They try to see because they they want, again, they want instant access to black men whenever they see the skin. Whenever they see the skin color, they're like, okay, I should be able to get something out of this guy. That's it. That's it for now. There's more, but I'm going to stop right here because we're up to an hour.